Welcome. Welcome back. Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lang. All right, we're coming in with <laughs> Bel Air. A little late, but we're here. Um, episode 8 of Season 1. No one wins when the family feuds. Let's address the big old elephant in the room. I'm under a different treatment with my dermatologist. So we in this adjustment phase where my skin is just doing something a little wacky. Yeah, Didn't want y'all to see it. Covered it up. We family, but we ain't that good. We ain't that cool. <laughs> Let's get into this episode. <laughs> Man, like the title say, no one wins when the family feuds. That is so true. Yes. And this episode, I was so hoping to find out what, what the hell did Will's father do, man? More importantly, what did y'all do? Right. <laughs> to the father or towards the father? Because that seems like that's more important or what needs to be covered up more than what he possibly right. did. Yeah, exactly. So the episode starts off, well, first of all, the, the episode this week was fire again. It was. Bel Air is doing their thing. So this episode, it is Will's 17th birthday and his mom came in on a private plane and right out the gate when Aunt Viv and Aunt Vi went to her, you could tell it was going to be some BS between them this whole entire what, episode. What sisters don't know how to greet each other? Right. Like, like, they, they, like, like uh, uh, first of all, most sisters be like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and, and what kicked that to a whole nother notch, Aunt Vi was like, Will is a man now. We've been hiding his daddy from him since he was little. So yeah. it's time for us to let him know. And I was like, yes, please, Finally. please let him know what happened to his dad. My auntie but, was sitting over there like, like mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Because at first I thought it was just only Aunt Vi, Aunt Viv that didn't want it to be told. I didn't know that Uncle Phil was in on it too. Well, we, I figured. I mean, that I know he was in on it, but yeah. I didn't know that he was going to hold that Will don't need to know. Remember when Hillary was trying to give Ashley and um, Carlton the scoop and the tea while she was cooking in the kitchen? Right. And um, Uncle was like, uh-uh, we, we, we don't need to be talking oh, about that. Oh, yeah, So right yeah. in the day, I was like, okay, this is a secret that they are really holding real close to the back. So also in this episode, Carlton is on punishment for throwing the party. Mm -hmm. But he's wondering why ain't Will on punishment. But... Yes. Uncle Phil said his punishment is delayed because it's his birthday. And I was like, what kind of BS is that? Yeah. I'm like, my mom and them ain't never gave me that Matter of fact, this punishment is, is punishment. Especially on your birthday, it'll make them feel even better because they gonna know you're going to hurt worse. Yeah, and they can save money because yeah. I ain't got to buy you no cake, no ice cream. Your little friends got to come over here. Yeah. yeah. That, matter of fact, they probably wanted us to get in trouble around our birthday. Right. So they had to do skit. But I like what Carlton said. Carlton was like, okay, let, let me reason with this process that y'all yeah. have going on here. Okay, so why does Will get a pass for everything that he does? Because he's in this adjustment phase, but everything we do, we have to be picture perfect. Probably perfect, yeah. And Uncle Phil was like, basically, you don't have to get ready because you were born ready. Will has to adjust to being born, get ready. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So right. y'all should know this by now. He does it. That makes a lot of sense to you. But these are still teenagers. Right. That's going to do teenage skit. We were talking about it earlier. Like, kids are going to do exactly what kids do. Right. Most of the time, they're going to do what their parents did, whether they know they did right. it or not. Because apple don't fall too far from the tree. Because DNA don't never lie. Right. <laughs> Sometimes you be like, you won't even around to, to know that your daddy act just like that. Right. Why you acting just like your daddy? Because <laughs> DNA be like, get on. Yeah. <laughs> And then also, Carlton was upset about, like I said, about being perfect. But I thought yeah. he only, they only had to be perfect for the campaign. But kind of find out it's that Carlton may happen to be, they had to be perfect forever. So I can't imagine, you know, you know, growing up in a household that I had to be perfect. Of course, you did some skit wrong. Yeah, you you got your a whoop. But having to be perfect in the public eye. School. Yeah. Because on the last episode, we didn't talk about it, which we meant to. But, you know, we're human we're not perfect right. um we meant to talk about how it was revealed last episode why Carlton has the anxiety this um disorder where he's basically trying to be perfect yeah and also trying to morph himself into it into being this acceptable black yeah basically that's what it is 
And because of the pressure of trying to be perfect, trying to be the black one that everybody loves and adores, he developed anxiety because mm -hmm. it's so much pressure. Yeah. So I'm really glad that they are touching on issues that deal with people's mental health. Yeah. Because when you do, you put so much pressure on people to be a certain way, look a certain way. We talk about this yeah. like on social media. You see everybody that they're on camera and everything is blurred and filtered and everybody's smile is perfect and skin is flawless. Yeah, Facetune. But <laughs> we walk around here, we develop insecurities because right. we don't move. Look, may not think we living like they live. No, they just taking the perfect picture. I don't know about y'all. I'm sick of Kyla. Yeah. Which, you know, I can appreciate Hillary getting 3 million views on the, the Third Chef video. But if that's not who she is and that's not her brand, no, don't force it on her. Because right. if you're supposed to be such a great influencer, point her in the direction of who she is. So come yeah. to find out that this whole venture is really not about the creators in the house. Because this sucker... Follow. Huh? It's about oh, This sucker put a $50,000 clause... In the contract. Yeah. So Hillary was telling him that I want out. I, I, this is not me because after she had a conversation with her mom and her dad telling them that she's going to move forward. I, I don't care that y'all don't like the Thirsty video, but hey, <laughs> this is getting me paid. This is getting me sponsored. So I'm continuing with this. And basically, so, dad, book your campaign. Right. If so, it messes up, it messes so up. So Viv was like, hey, is that really you? And that made her think. Yeah. And that's the thing. We will, we will sell ourselves out. Just to make a few dollars, man. Yeah. yeah. And that's not the true you. And you will end up being, and you could tell that when she was getting ready to go and record. She couldn't do it. Yeah, she couldn't do it. Because now you're staring back at yourself, not being yourself. Yeah. And every creator knows, and I, as much as people probably don't want to admit it, we all know that there are certain things that we can do that triggers an audience and garners great views. Right. We can do it right now. Right. But can I look at myself in the mirror? Am I going to be able to continue doing that to right. garner and to keep the audience that I got in from that said video or that that little antic that I put out there on social media? Right. Am I going to be able to keep the people? And more than likely, no, because that's not who you are. Right. And I'm glad that she went back and apologized to Jazz because Jazz was rocking with her. Jazz yeah. was like, what kind of BS is this you get here and change? <laughs> because you got the views. <laughs> he said, I wanted to hear, you know, you were you know, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> Shout out to Jay. I'm trying to tell y'all, who your dermatologist? I need to fly in. This, that boy's skin is everything. <laughs> I can appreciate somebody with some... Come on with yeah, it. Yeah, that is your thing. That is it your is thing. my thing. That's your thing. And feet. That's my thing. Yeah. Don't judge me. Always looking at feet. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. around her, cover your feet up. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm <laughs> going to analyze your feet. Yeah. <laughs> and they better be nice. <laughs> also, this episode, Will and Lisa was pissing me off because Lisa text, <laughs> text, <laughs> text Will to let, her, let him know that she in the pool house. And I'm like, has y'all let Carlton know yet? Right. And especially Will, with you, with you trying to, you know, do right by him now and y'all on good terms. And, you know, but Will was like, I can't do this right now because my mom is here. But I'm like, ain't got nothing to do with your mom. It's it your cousin. Every, it's your cousin that you got to make it right. Because mom's, you know, mom's care, but not at the point that. I girl say mom and boys, yeah. they don't give a buck. Right. Let it be that girl, though. Yeah. <laughs> Let it be that girl, though. It's a whole nother conversation. But here's my, here's my thing. How is it? That no one could sneak around the house without Jeffrey knowing, yep. <laughs> without Uncle Phil knowing. But she sneaking all the way in there, going through the and getting to the pool house, and don't nobody like the ring doorbell ain't went off. Right. <laughs> ain't nobody thinks like the ding doo. <laughs> like <laughs> what's going on around here at hey, this house? Hey, Lisa ain't a threat. She family, so you know. But ain't nobody paying attention to her when she come in. But if she ain't supposed to be there. <laughs> We should know that she's dead. Well, I guess she said I got a right to be here. Y'all did my mom's memorial here, so I can. Oh no, uh, uh. You just, we just, we just donated space for. But that's while. the way we think, though. No, it yeah. is the way we well, think, we though. Think. Uh huh. Say we like, like mama said, give you an inch and you yeah, take, take a mile. A mile. Say, <laughs> you would stay. Oh, listen, we had a whole person move in, not this house, our our townhouse, 
We had a whole person move in on us because we told them you could stay here a couple of days during the week yeah. so that you didn't have to drive back home an hour. Yeah. And the next day we know that knuckle was living with us and we don't know how the hell it happened. Bring your stuff right on our nose, we won't even realize. You know, bring a couple shirts here, a <laughs> couple pair of pants there, a couple pair of shoes there and there. And that's how you know it, the whole wardrobe is here. And your lease is, <laughs> you let your lease go. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Did you? Did I just? <laughs> What? <laughs> Did we just get a, de a dependent that we can't claim on our taxes? Right. <laughs> huh? 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 I don't know how we got down that rabbit hole, but anyway. Because <laughs> I'm still a little messed up by it. <laughs> so now it's time for Will's birthday party, but the food is late because Uncle Phil have it. And he's he, stuck in traffic or yeah, something. Yeah, something like that. So they decide that, okay, versus Will was like, okay, the food is here. Then you know what? Let me go ahead and open my gifts up. So he opened up his mom's gift. His mom gave him a, a picture of, of her and him when he was a baby. And the first thing he said, hey, Aunt Viv, did you take this picture? And she was like, no, I no, wasn't around. I wasn't around. He and said, he said, well, so who, well, who took the picture? It started. So they once again had a deterrent. So Aunt Viv was like, you know what, Will? Open this one. This is, this is from me and your uncle. And they gave him a pair of signed limited edition Jordan that the Jordan limited, himself signed. Limited, limited. Limited, yeah. And so that's when Will's mom went clean off. And this is when we found out where the real issue is at. Yeah. Is that basically that she's, that Aunt Viv says that she's the strong one. Aunt Vi. Aunt Vi says she's, that, that she's the strong one and that Come to find out, she took care of their mom. She took care yeah. of their grandma. She took care of Aunt Viv when she was trying to come up in the painting game, getting her paint set. So basically, everything that happened in the family was thrown on her. And she was like, every time I turn around, you always trying to erase me out of my life. And that's yeah, what you do. Like, yeah. yeah, that's what you're doing with Will. Why would you get Will a more expensive gift I agree with that. than I got? Now, and, and we had, we, we we had, had, a, we had little... a disagreement. Because I, I say, I see what you're saying, but I'm like, are we to limit our gift to somebody just because somebody else feels uncomfortable? Or basically, should Will not get that gift because his mom can't afford it? But I, I don't... I, I, yeah, what do y'all think about it? Because yeah. in my opinion, here's the thing. If we already know that there's a little bit of tension going on and a little bit of strife, we may not know what it all entails, but we know that there's enough that it's this it's this battle for attention and power yeah. and this, that, and the third. <clears throat> what I'm not going to do is present the one thing you love the most with something that I know that you can't right. afford to give them. Because I can give that to them any other time. He, the baby lives with me. <laughs> I could give him the shoes when he goes to school on Monday. But it's different than the birthday, though. No, no. He going to love them shoes the same. It's different than the birthday. No, yeah, but we I disagree. Wouldn't do, yeah, I wouldn't we do disagree. that. I see what she said, and I think you see what I said. I do, I do. But it's, you yeah, was like, it's, it's buck a, your feelings. It's a it's a gray area, in my opinion. Yeah. It's a very Stella gray area. Stella said, buck your feelings. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I do like in Bel Air that it, it gives us pieces to think about, especially for family. Mm -hmm. And I know countless people who have had, you know, sicknesses, death, misfortunes, where only few siblings is handling everything while the other siblings are doing everything. And eventually that stuff comes home to roost one day. It does. Matter of fact, I know I know somebody that they almost got into drag out fights with their brothers and sisters like their mom was sick. And they was the one kept on going to all the hospital visits, filling out all that paperwork you got to mm -hmm. fill out and stuff. And yeah, that stuff coming on the roof. So you got to evaluate, are you the person that's throwing everything on your family members? Or are you the one with all the weight on you? Yeah. yeah. I've even had to have that conversation. Like, y'all think that stuff just happens. There yeah. is a person that makes, makes that stuff, stuff happen. happen. Yeah. You don't see the process. You don't see the fighting. You don't see the rejection. Right. You don't see the research. You don't <clears> see <throat> the calendar of skit that you have to keep straight just right. in order to keep this train of flowing. Right. And like she said, all that y'all all y'all wanted to do when mama got sick was Throw some money. Yeah. Or you can hire somebody to take care of. Right. Money don't fix everything. Everything. Exactly. Somebody has to physically take the time to do things. Right. So, yeah. And that's another thing, yeah. When parents and, and grandmas get fixed, sick and stuff, first thing people want to do is throw them in um, Throw them in a home. Throw them in a home. 
And now, now if you don't got the, if you, if you don't, don't have the bandwidth to do it, then I say yeah. yes. But in the situation with them was, it's like, no, I'm not, I'm not putting my mama in there. We're gonna take care of it. like money. Don't like she, she said, money don't change diapers. It doesn't. <laughs> I mean, it kind of does though. <laughs> I mean, it can, but you know. So yeah, that's definitely, um, definitely something to think about, man. It is, and yeah. and I loved how she explained herself. She was like. I started resenting you because of it. She was yeah. like, you have always, well, we're going forward a little bit because the kids had to end up being the adults in the situation yeah. and telling the adults where they were wrong with each other in the situation and how they needed to um, right. make it right and whatnot. But what else was, was telling too with their relationship because on Vi, I thought she was taking Will to a restaurant, you know, and I'm pretty sure it probably was above her budget you know this the is my Michelin son yeah. yeah so i'm taking my son here to only come and find out that they come there as a aunt viv and them come there as a family every, every week. week so this ain't special yeah, yeah so you could tell that that was the first dig so when we got to the jordans it was it was over it yeah. was a second dig because she invited herself yeah true. because yeah. she yeah. was like <laughs> you know me and will gonna go out for lunch but do you mind if i join you I do kind of mind. <laughs> I don't flew all the way this way. I don't want you. I, I want some time with my yeah. baby. You know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, all episode, Will's mama was act like she wanted to tell Will where his daddy was. So, when he finally confronted her, like, you know what? I need you to tell me who my daddy was. Do I look like him? Do I talk like him? Do I act like him? Because obviously up? he does. So, she reached to her A and pulled this out. That your daddy was a part of all these different pyramid schemes. <laughs> That's basically what she said. <laughs> yeah, all oh, these, he had a gambling problem. Yeah, yeah, all these pyramid schemes that nothing never worked. He jumped from one thing to another. And he basically was using me through it all. And I got tired of him using me, so I let him go. And I was like, BS. Ain't no was, way that y'all was it, like, it, yeah. <laughs> That, he took not, it. He took it. But you know, but, but you could tell he wasn't settled with it. He like, didn't buy that. right? Because y'all such in a frenzy about telling him, like, that's nothing. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah, you could tell anybody that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you should have said something else. Like, <laughs> he had a wife on the other side of town or something. That would have made him like, you know, maybe that's why y'all been real secretive about. It. But. Being bad with money and messing up opportunities and bouncing. Yeah, I, yeah. Hell, that's most of I'm people's like, way. So now we have an opportunity to see our boy Jeffrey. Y'all know every time we go to see Jeffrey, it's going to be a whole show, right? So Jeffrey and Uncle Phil are out there doing their thing, boxing, blah, 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 blah. And Uncle Phil basically was like, listen, we need to make sure that Will doesn't know anything about his father. Mm -hmm. Come hella high water. Keep him away from Will. And Jeffrey was like, you know what? I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a moral assassin. I have a heart. <laughs> like, but when it comes to the kids, I don't want to step in the way right. of a father being in a child's life. Because I don't want them to do it to me. Because I don't want nobody doing that to me. And right. he said, what if someone tried to do that with you, with Carlton? How would it make you feel? And Uncle Phil hit him with the ooh-wee. I don't... You, I don't work for you. You work for me. So right. basically do what I tell you to do. And I said, he first, pulled that corporate America boo skit. <laughs> and I said, do you really want to play these kind of games with somebody that knows where the skeletons are buried? But you had a good point. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that uncle Phil got some skeletons too. That Carlton is hiding for him too. So, or vice versa. Yeah. 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 So that so was like, well, you know, they probably scratching each other's back. So, mm -hmm. They're going to have to walk away with a wash. And I said, so how is Jeffrey going to continue on with a relationship with Uncle Phil? To do something that he don't want to do. Yeah. I yeah. said. That's, yeah. Like you said, that's, that's way outside of his moral compass. The moral assassin. Yeah. <laughs> I said, he going to quit. He going to quit. So, I know he going to quit. So we see that in this episode, Will goes to talk to him. And we was like, finally, Will is going to ask him. About Rashad. Like, how did Rashad disappear? But nah, Will was like, I need your help with something, man. Can you help me find my dad? 
But before before Will asked him that, we could see that Jeffrey was getting ready to put his freaking resignation letter on the desk. Like, I can do a whole lot of skit, but I ain't coming between. Well, we kid. assume it. Yeah, I, I put it, the way he pulled it out and snatched it back in, and put it back in when uh when Will came in, that was a resignation letter. Or it was pictures and information about his daddy. Oh yeah. And all and he was gonna put it on Uncle Phil's desk like bow wow wow. Yippee oh yippee yay. I think he was ready to quit. I don't know, but when he came past Will after everybody had got settled down and everybody apologized to everybody, he kind of just was tiptoeing like, you yeah. don't see me and I don't <laughs> see you. And that's when Will rolled up on him like, hey, yo, I need your help and whatnot. But hopefully we get a resolve to this daddy thing. I'm sick of yeah, it. Yeah, I need it, man. And yeah. then also... We think that Carlton and Will are just going to be on an even playing field from now on. He's accepted the fact that him and Lisa are no more. Finally, no man. More, and he gave <laughs> Will the blessing. Now, I said, Will is bucked up for that. Because once you mess with somebody, somebody's ex and you don't been with, that's just nasty. That's just foul. Like, there's so many other people you can go after. Yeah, because, you know, we sticklers not to do that to family. No, nah, not, not, like, not nah. friends neither. Yeah, family and friends. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was engaged to somebody that was Stanley's friend before, but, but he not, didn't know no, it. No, that's, that's, that's a whole different. I, we won't, like, we won't, like, cool like that. <laughs> yeah. There's just somebody I just knew around the way. <laughs> he was the weed man. But anyway, um... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, y'all, y'all get in the comments, man. Let us know what y'all thought about the episode. And we're going to see y'all next week, man. Peace.